If you were to play an instrument, which would it be? I don't know. When I, you know, these days, I, I think I'd probably do drums or something because I, I think no, it, it would no. get out some of my aggression. No, that's not good for you. Um, You're a front guy. You got to be out front. You're not going to. You, here's dr- the challenge. Drummers are not. No. Sometimes, you know what? I think I, I would want to be like the singer because I like being out front. Yes. But, you know. I'm not always great with the words. You know what I mean? So I really have to like know it and Okay, own well it. let's suggest that you were you were a virtuoso at whatever instrument or position you wanted to be, okay? You would be a front guy. Yeah. Maybe I could be like the keyboard one. I don't no, know. No, front keyboards are not front guys. They could be. They're Sometimes losers, they are. Generally losers of the band. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to all you keyboardists out there, don't listen to what Todd Vino has to say, but you can send him a tweet. Here's the hierarchy, here's the hierarchy of, of a band, okay? It's the singer, guitar player, a bass player, because sometimes people uh, don't understand bass between guitar, so they, they I by default, right? Uh, then it's drummer, then it's keyboard player. Right that, at the end. That's how it works. How, what's the hierarchy of our show? What do you think? It's definitely you no come on come on <laughs> it's todd vino and clinton wilkins it's not clinton wilkins and todd vino that's how i say it isn't okay it? i don't know i know that's true but it's best well we'll give a shout out to our producer sarah she's been with us all year that's yeah, true she she's has. put up with us now for i guess five months which is really you know that's a big commitment that's a big commitment and while we have you here and while you're listening to us kind of banter and you know celebrate the cmas yes um if you want to catch our show you know, you can listen to it on the Rogers uh, website. So I guess it would be City News website. Right? Yes. You can also check us out anywhere where you listen to your podcast. So Spotify, Apple Music. Um, Stitcher? You know, check, I, I don't know. We're on is all there, the... Is uh, there Stitcher? Does that exist? I don't know. I think You might does. know more than I do. Yeah. But anyway, we're also on social media. So check yes. us out. If there's ever anything you want us to talk about on our show, we'd love to get it in and we'd love to talk about it. Uh, we love to talk about it. So. Yeah, we love to talk uh, mortgages. So and we love to talk mortgage, and we're going to talk yeah. about that. Absolutely. So let's uh, talk what renewals. You want to talk? Yeah, about we're going to talk about renewals. And you kind of touched on this already. Yeah, we touched bit. on it a little bit, and we're going to yeah. talk about refinance. It's just so so important, and I yeah. feel like we need to dive into this a little bit more. Um, you know, if you own a home already, typically you have some equity in that home, especially if you bought it like 2019 prior. So if you have a mortgage that's coming up for renewal. I think it's very prudent right now to shop around or at least ask the questions. Okay. Not all lenders are equal in terms of the pricing. There is a wide difference. And, you know, in terms of shopping around, it might be a transfer from lender to lender. And typically that comes without a cost. Okay. Typically the new lender will cover the cost to do a transfer. But if you want to do a refinance, that might come with some low cost, you know, maybe an appraisal or, you know, registration costs. But in a refinance situation, you might be able to pull out equity in terms of doing renovations, and that's really great during the spring and the summer, or clean up some consumer debt. And some clients are choosing to extend their amortizations because, let's focus, the rates are higher than they were the last couple of years, yeah. and maybe taking a, a longer amortization for the interim yeah. for a shorter period of time makes sense. Yeah. We're seeing more and more clients wanting to take home equity lines of credit. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to say, you know what, these are things of the 90s, the 2000s, yeah. like HELOCs, they're dead. But what do they call it? HELOC. What's that stand for? Home equity line of credit. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, we love our acronyms in this business. Wasn't Manulife? Uh, didn't they have it like? Yeah, a, the Manulife yeah. One is a very popular yeah. format, and we do offer that product. Right. Uh, you would have a, you know a fixed component and the variable component. The variable would be the revolving, um, and you can you can have it that up to eighty percent of your property. The revolving component can be a maximum of 65%. Mm-hmm. So you'd have to have at least 15% in a term position. Right. And, um, you know, what we're doing with consumers, though, you know, if they want that type of product, typically we're moving over the debt that they want kind of right now. So that might be their existing mortgage or if they're going to pull in any consumer debt, we'll have that into like one product. And then we'll give them a home equity line for the balance of the equity up to 80% of their market value. And that's there maybe for a future project, but it doesn't cost you anything to have that home equity line. Right. You're not paying interest unless you draw it down. And the nice thing is with this line of credit, it's lower than any of your consumer debt. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Typically these yeah. lines are at prime plus 50 or lower. Right. You know, sometimes we're seeing them as low as at prime or prime plus 20. Uh, those are usually, you know, better, better pricing. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so you were mentioning that be, w- with rates higher, obviously, when with people renewing, especially mm-hmm. if they've had a really low rate, in order to help absorb some of that That's shock, that. they can amortize out longer. Over a longer period. Yeah. So speaking of products like the Manulife One, yep. there's other 
uh, bank lenders that offer a similar type of product that's a mortgage on a line of credit. Sometimes these home equity lines are a forever plan, Todd. Yeah. They're not really meant to be a forever plan, but they end up becoming a forever plan. So what you can do is you could collapse that whole plan into an amortized mortgage, let's say at 25 years, right. and get an insurable rate. So typically the rate that we could get to combine the two is lower than what it would be for each each segment individually. Right. So we're doing more of that type of thing, combining the two, and that's not even a refinance. We can do that as a transfer or as a renewal. We can mm-hmm. combine the two. As long as it's all secured against the property, combining that is not a worry. Right. And we're certainly seeing those types of transactions. Um, you know, I think if you have a home equity line that's at the max and you're at prime plus, why yeah. not amortize it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Get a lower rate, amortize it over 25 years, and it forces you to pay it down. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, I mean, again, these are all things that, that you need to have conversations with your mortgage specialist about. And you need right? to look at your finances, you know, right. every so often. You know, I think when it's a new season or if it's financial literacy month or if it's the first of the year, it's first of the week, it's first of the month. Right. Look at your finances. See yeah. where things sit. Yeah. What about remortgage? Just like a refinance. Yeah, refinance. So you can refinance up to 80% of the market yeah. value of your home. Yeah. And we're certainly seeing more refinances this year than we have in the past. So Why do you think that trend. is? Why do you think that is? You know, I think there are some cracks starting to happen. Yeah. I think in some people finance. are starting to have a bit of a hard time. We need to remember, like during COVID, people weren't shopping. They weren't eating out. They weren't traveling. Yeah. But they're starting to do those things again. So sometimes people are getting themselves into trouble. But a refinance is not just to clean up consumer debt. We're seeing refinances for people, you know, to do improvements to the property. Yeah. You know, are you going to refinance if you have a very low fixed rate midterm? Probably not. But you might do the refinance at renewal. Mm -hmm. We're seeing people doing refinances out of a variable rate. We're doing people doing refinances, you know, at the end of the term. But we are seeing people that will refinance during the middle of the term, even in a low rate. Because sometimes they need to refinance. When's the ideal time to refinance? I think at renewal. At it's renewal. always the right yeah, time. Always the right because time. you're a free agent at renewal. Right. You can shop around. Yeah. You can get advice. We can make changes. And it comes without a cost. So some lenders will allow us to look at doing it four months in advance of the uh, renewal date. You, we can always get an approval four months prior. Some lenders will, uh, what lenders will actually let us pay it out four months prior. So we're talking to them maybe even eight months before right. the renewal. Yeah. With our customers, we start getting in touch way, way before right. the renewal because it's so important. And, and you know, I think getting something approved today, even if it's not going to close until August or September, at least you know what you have because if the rates do go up, at least you have something sure. held. Which yeah. I think is important. Yeah. And something that people should make sure that they have in order, of course, are all their documents. And if this tax season just passed, if you need to have your tax It would docs, shock you. That. So many people have not filed their income tax. Yeah. Just because, you know, some of the CRA workers or all of CRA workers yeah. were on strike for, yeah. you know, eight or 10 days or whatever. Right. They're back. And yeah. the deadline didn't change. No, it didn't change. You no. need to get your taxes filed. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's one thing that you really can't mess around with. Yeah. is taxes. Yeah. What's the old adage? What are two things that you can't Death avoid? Death and taxes, man. Death and taxes. You heard it here from Todd. <laughs> How do people get a hold of you? You know, check us out online at teamclinton.ca slash radio. We have like over 500 blog posts on there. We have some rates, you know, examples of rates. Uh, there's links to our show, our social media, lots of great content. Check us out. And, you know, I thank everybody for tuning in. Absolutely. Thanks so much for tuning in. Always great, Clinton. Hopefully you had as much fun as I had. I always have fun. I look forward to Mortgage 101. It's one of the best things that I do. I talk to people all the time and their listeners, and, you know, I thank you. Excellent. Mortgage 101, your guide to home ownership with Clinton, Wil- Clinton Wilkinson and myself, Todd Vino. Thanks so much for tuning in and listening. If you've liked what you've heard and you want to learn more, feel free to visit us online at teamclinton.ca.